You're listening to the Chad HD Show On Demand. Good for you. Now download the KFYO app and listen live weekday afternoons 5 to 7 p.m. Central. Broadcasting from the great state of Texas, this is the Chad Hasty Show. News and views with a Lone Star perspective. You can sound off during the show by sending Chad a text at 806-680-2790. That's 806-680-2790. Or call in at 1-800-687-0790. Now, here's Chad Hasty. Amarillo, Abilene, Wichita Falls, Midland, Odessa, Dallas, Fort Worth, down in Houston, over in El Paso, and anywhere else, inside or outside the great state of Texas, or anywhere else you may be listening on this Thursday, February 15th, welcome in to the Chad HD Show. Glad to have you with us today. So much to talk about. A busy show as we will visit with Mackenzie DeLulo with the Texan News coming up at about 5.35 this evening. At 6.35, we'll visit with the folks, or excuse me, about 6.05, not 35, 6.05, we'll visit with the folks from the Lions Club here in Lubbock as we get ready for the world's largest pancake festival. That'll be happening this weekend. So uh, those of you in Lubbock and surrounding areas, if you want to uh, drive in for that, it's always a good time, a fun time. Uh, We're also counting down the days until early voting begins uh, here in the great state of Texas. Uh, We'll be going through different uh, campaign news, uh, different things that you need to know about, answering your questions as well when it comes to some of the different campaigns uh, that are going on. If you've got any questions at all, about any of the Texas primary races that we've been uh, discussing and uh, obviously uh, that uh, we've had uh, you know uh, interviews with, uh, then uh, we would love to hear from you. You can text in always at 806-680-2790. That's 806-680-2790. When you do text in, let us know who you are. Give us a name. Give us a location where you're listening from. We always like to know that information. And, of course, you can also give us a call at 1-800-687-0790. That's 1-800-687-0790. You can uh, give us a call. Nick, the first voice you hear from when you dial in today, which uh, we found out earlier, uh, we we had our pre-show meeting today not a long meeting as nick had other things he had to do and really didn't feel like uh, having a meeting at all uh but he did tell me that he got new shoes uh nick you, now you you got some new shoes you didn't know what type they were no i i, I don't pay attention to that i see new shoes i say thank you that's it that's it. I, I, don't, yeah. I don't ask any any uh questions well every, once a year yes. uh my uh fiance gets me a new pair of shoes so that's kind of your Valentine's yes. gift. Yes, is a new, new shoes. pair of shoes. Yeah, and you just throw them on. You don't look at I them. You them don't on. inspect them. Well, unfortunately, though, uh, I have been told. See, this is how much I don't know. She knows what it is. She because she gets it, so she knows sure. all, all the brand and everything. Yeah. She told me though. Yeah. Yesterday, that this is the last time she's going to be able to get these exact pair. Oh. That I need to tell her a new pair. So I, I, my, that throws my whole. Uh, well, does year. she have a, a person that she gets these from, or maybe I don't know. I don't know how she gets them. I don't ask again. I don't ask any questions. Are they getting rid of shoes? What, maybe. What's going on? I, I don't. They're the unfortunately. We're all going to be wearing Crocs next yeah, year. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. They're the they're the cloth ones. They have cloth. Oh. They're cloth heavy. Okay. Um, these shoes. So, uh, it, 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 half an inch of a, a puddle. Yeah. Wet. I can't. I it gets into the shoe. I don't know how. Yeah. It gets into the shoe. Okay. Um, but hey, they're great. 
Um, I, I, I wouldn't ask for, I don't, I don't ask for any other shoes. So, yeah. um, I'm very fortunate that, uh, uh, she keeps up this uh, tradition. I don't know how long we've been doing this now. For, so, uh, so do you get her the same thing I don't every get her year? Shoes. No, I mean, I, I don't get her this, not. Yeah. No. Uh, what did I, what did I, I think I got her a couple of plants. Uh, <laughs> a, 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 a fun, <laughs> I got her, I got her a fun vase. Uh, it was, uh-huh. it was a, a cactus shaped, had a little smiley face on it. She loved it. I mean, it. did you get flowers or did you, um, or they just the plant, plant like the, house plants? The, the, <laughs> she, she's more, she favors plants okay. that she can tend to and, I like and, that. And, 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 and harvest. Sure. You know, even if they're just small little potter ones. Something and that then, won't die in right. a few days. Right. right. Like a, like a balloon. Yeah. We, don't, we don't really do balloons because yeah. it's like, thanks. Now I got to put this in the corner of the room right. and watch it slowly die <laughs> over the next few months. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, we, uh, we usually stick to more, uh, um, practical, uh, practical gifts. I like yeah. that. That's good. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. yeah. I, I also got her some groceries. <laughs> you got her some groceries. I got That's... Her some groceries. So that, that, so you went to the store. I and, did. I went yeah. to the store. Yeah. yeah. Uh, hey, we were low on a few things. She has a, she has a special yogurt she likes. So I got her a little bit of that. It, it, you know, just, just the, the special things. Right. You know? it's, yeah. It's Valentine's day. Yeah. I, I, I go a little extra above and beyond on Valentine's day. <laughs> Sweetheart, I, I saw we needed some salt. Uh, so happy Valentine's Day. Here's some salt for you. A few bags of pretzels. And and uh, here's a house plant that I picked up. W- it's a wonderful firm. Valentine's Here Day. Here you go. Yeah. Um, yeah. But that's good. She loved it. It's, it she that's loved all it. that's all that matters. Yeah, exactly. That's all that matters. Exactly. Uh, yesterday, I, I did the uh, – my wife is someone who – she loves getting the flowers, mm-hmm. but she's like, you don't have to get me the, all the rosy. You know, she's, she's very practical, very mm-hmm. practical. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, but I, I did the, uh, I, I did the stop inside the, uh, United Supermarkets, um, uh, man tent is what man they basically tent. had, uh, set up outside of my Market Street location, uh, which it, uh, it's not called the man tent, mm-hmm. but it was just a bunch of guys in there buying flowers right. and chocolate covered strawberries and, and all that kind of stuff. So I was, I was in the man tent, uh, buying some flowers and, and all that kind of good stuff. So. No, yeah. no shoes or anything. You didn't no do? shoes. Did oh. not purchase any shoes. Okay. All right. uh, no, did not have any shoes purchased for me either. Yeah. Uh, but I I like that tradition. That's a, that's a good yearly tradition of, of I'll just take a pair of shoes Be, yeah. because for ladies out there, I I have seen the question all all the time on social media before. What do I get for you know my husband? What mm-hmm. do I get for because guys. We really don't care about Valentine's Day. It's not, we don't care. We don't, we're doing it for you, ladies. And they know, right, they know right. this, but they're trying to be nice. They're trying to do something too. And so I like the, I like the shoe idea. That's good. A, a, any holiday that, uh, uh, that expects gifts, yeah. uh, birthday, Christmas, uh, Valentine's Day, anything like that, yeah. uh, anytime I am asked, oh, what, what would you like? You know, this year, last year, you got this, whatever. It's always, uh, I immediately go to. Well, what am I missing? What do What do I What do we need? Yeah. Uh, one One Christmas, uh, uh, her mom actually asked me, uh, uh, you know, what What would you like for Christmas? And I I, I gave her a list of my things that I needed. Uh, garbage bags was one of them. I said tall kitchen gar- garbage bags. Um, some more dog food. I literally went down. I gave her a list. She ridiculed me for it. In fact, they both did. But you know, whatever. I it, I got thick skin. That's okay. Yeah. Um, but it's better than. I mean, it, it, it's practical <laughs> gifts. What am I going to do with, you know, a flower? Right, yes. It's nice. I appreciate it. Thank you. But yes. I can't, you know, I can't eat the flower. No, you're not. Um, and you don't want to show off the flower. Right, right. I, I, I mean, show off my like, groceries. Right. Right, but uh, I, I, I just prefer more, what am I going to use immediately? Yeah. What, what do I need? And I like the trash bag like idea. Yeah. I like that. I like the trash bag idea. That was last year, yeah. Because that's, you. you could, you can use that. You can I can, use and the trash I did. Bags. Yeah. And I did. I'm currently it's the, it's working through the, the role. The gift of love. Trash. Yes. Yeah. Uh, we've got a lot to get into on the show today. We're gonna have a fun one. Uh, besides trash bags and uh, in Valentine's Day and shoes, uh, you can give us a call. Sound off on uh, any of the topics of the day. Uh, we've got Joe Manchin floating the idea of Mitt Romney as a potential running mate as he is looking at a third party bid. I think that's great. Uh, if, if you're Joe Manchin, you might as well pick a, a moderate Democrat, uh, to run with you, uh, if you're going to run as a third party candidate. And, and it looks like, uh, he's, he's looking at that possibility with, uh, with all mittens here, 
Uh, this out of NBC News. Uh, Senator Joe Manchin danced uh, around uh, his interest in a third-party presidential bid on Thursday, but he endorsed a potential running mate if he does. Quote, hypothetically, if I was picking my running mate, really who I would ask right now is Mitt Romney. Manchin said, identifying the Republican senator from Utah. Manchin also said he would consider former Senator Rob Portman, a Republican from Ohio, as a vice presidential pick. Uh, Rob's a dear friend of mine. Uh, he said he's a good man. Manchin offered several pointed criticisms of Joe Biden and the appearance at, a, at a City Club of Cleveland Breakfast, part of his nationwide listening tour that followed his decision not to seek another Senate term. The tour, which has included a stop last month in New Hampshire, ahead of the state's first in the nation presidential primary, has fueled speculation the Manchin might mount an independent or third-party campaign for president. He's been linked to the No Labels Organization's effort to field a bipartisan ticket. The City Club of CEO... Uh, who moderated the forum, repeatedly pressed Manchin on his 2024 intentions. Manchin repeatedly dodged, offering meandering responses and asides during the audience Q&A session. An attendee tried again, asking Manchin, believed, uh, asking if Manchin uh, believed his opponent uh, would be if he were to run for president. He said, guys, I'm not running for anything. I'm uh, basically running to try and get people involved. Afterward, Manchin acknowledged to reporters that he hasn't ruled out a White House campaign. Quote, third party run, everything is on the table, Manchin said in response to a question from NBC. Nothing's off the table. I'm still evaluating all of that. Super Tuesday is pretty much uh, would be a deadline. It tells you where you are. So uh, Joe Manchin, uh, listen, if he launches a third party campaign, it's obviously going to be targeted at Joe. And uh, it would hurt the Biden campaign, I think, uh, much, much more than it would hurt uh, Donald Trump. But throwing Mitt Romney on there, I, <laughs> it, uh, I, I think that would just be hilarious. I think it would be hilarious. And no, I don't think it would attract uh, any Republican votes. I mean, you might have a few here and there. But honestly... Do you really do you really get that excited about a Joe Manchin Mitt Romney ticket? Even if you hate Donald Trump, is that something you would even look at doing? And I hope not, because again, Joe Manchin he's still a Democrat. He may be considered a moderate Democrat. He's still a Democrat. He still voted I think what ninety something percent along with the Democrats and with Joe Biden. So it's not like this guy is a uh, uh, you know, a huge maverick just absolutely bucking the uh, Democrats at every pass. He's just not a big fan of Joe. He's not a big fan of where the Democrat Party is heading to. I applaud him for that. But any Republican who would even dare think about voting for Joe Manchin, uh, you're just, you're, you're nuts. Now, I can see why maybe some moderate Democrats uh, would want to vote for Joe uh, Joe Manchin. But honestly, there aren't that many moderate Democrats left in the nation. So you look at uh, you, you look at RFK Jr. And, you know, maybe that's a question that Joe Manchin gets asked: Why doesn't he just try to forge a deal with RFK Jr. and uh, and those two run on the same ticket? Now, you know, that would be interesting for Democrats. That might uh, actually pull more away from Joe Biden. If he were to do that, 806-680-2790. But yeah, I just, I laughed when he, when I saw that he was floating the idea out there about Mitt Romney. And you know, Mitt would do it. Mitt Romney would absolutely do it if, uh, if, if he had the opportunity to. Yeah, you think he'd be trying to screw over Trump. So he would absolutely do it if asked. 806-680-2790. When we come back. Your phone calls, your text, more news of the day. We'll get to the shooting out in Kansas City yesterday. Oh, yeah, it's going to be swept under the rug. We'll be right back. Completely 
The Chad Hasty Show can be heard all over West Texas. Weekdays from 5 to 7 p.m. Tune in on News Talk 95.1 and 790 KFYO in Lubbock. News Talk 940 in Amarillo. News Talk 94.7 and 1470 KYYW in Abilene. And in Wichita Falls on News Talk 96.3 and 1290. The Chad Hasty Show. Make it a part of your drive home. Weekdays from 5 to 7 p.m. To battle is to fight, to struggle, to overcome, and ultimately for the Marine Corps, it means to win. There is no alternative. It's not just a statement of intent. It's a promise to our nation. A promise kept for more than two centuries. A promise of the Marines. Talk Radio, Michael Berry, weekday mornings 830 to 11 on News Talk 95.1 and 790 KFYO. Welcome back to the Chad HD Show. Appreciate you being out there, taking a look at some local headlines out of some of our uh, cities uh, around uh, the uh, around the West Texas and the big country. City of Abilene clearing out city-owned property used as a homeless camp near MLK Bridge. City of Abilene cleared out a patch of its property, which had been previously used as a homeless encampment. Abilene Police Department representatives from the city's code enforcement arrived to a homeless encampment Wednesday morning to clean up the land, which is owned by the city. APD uh, telling uh, KTAB that at the time officers arrived, all of its previous residents had scattered out of the site. Uh, instead, what was left of the encampment near uh, MLK Bridge was a couple of shacks, several tents, and some lumber. The uh, city sending out a press release and city of Abilene cannot allow individuals to take up residence on city property. City personnel, including members of the police department and homeless outreach team, on site to address the situation and to assist individuals impacted as best possible. For now, the audit office creating a plan of cleanup and uh, not tear down. Police said residents of the encampment known to participate in various criminal activities, including assault, and drug abuse, Abilene residents that experiencing homelessness given resources uh, to help them out of their situations. ABD said mostly uh, most have uh, refused that assistance, which you do see that a lot with uh, some of these homeless encampments that do pop up. They pop up all over the damn place. Got a story that we may have time to get to later on out of Austin uh, where their numbers of homeless are, are exploding in Austin. But I was doing a little bit of driving around Lubbock, so, and, and, and you know, there, there's homeless encampments popping up in uh, in areas that you have to kind of look for. I have to look for and see, and uh, and then they're they're popping up here. They're, they're, they are all over the place. KCBD uh, in Lubbock reporting that about forty eight percent of LBNL customers still have not chosen a new electric provider. Uh, tonight's the deadline. On Wednesday, 48% of LBNL customers still had not cho- uh, chosen a new electric provider. Those who do not choose a company before the deadline of midnight tonight will be randomly assigned to a default provider. Uh, those providers are TXU Energy, Reliant Energy, and Octopus Energy. You'll get whatever you get. Now, you'll be able to choose if, if you don't choose a new energy provider by midnight and you're put onto one of these three, I believe it's a, it's a, like a monthly contract where you can, uh, you, you can leave after a month. You can choose a new energy provider and then at the end of the month, you'll be flipped over to, uh, the energy provider of your choosing. So you still have time to do it. I, I I wonder how many of you in the audience have not chosen an energy provider yet. How many of you out there in Lubbock, you're, you're still on LPNL service. You 
have not chosen a new energy provider. Uh, how many of you out there still haven't chosen? You can text in at 806-680-2790. And uh, why haven't you chosen a new energy provider? Is it just because it snuck up on you? Yeah, you're confused as to the process. What's the what's what's the hang up on your end? You can text in at 806-680-2790. We're going to try to get uh, the folks over at LPNL. We're going to try to get them on hopefully tomorrow, maybe early next week. Just uh, if you know people have additional you know Q and A because you're still going to have time to sign up with companies. Now, those of you in Lubbock, you've uh, heard me talk about uh, our friends over at Abundance Energy. Uh, they're sponsors of the show, great friends of the program. They're based right here in Lubbock. That's who we encourage you to sign up with. But I would love to know how many of you out there still have not chosen a new energy provider. Then those those in our other markets that are on ERCOD, this is you know this is. This isn't new for them. This is new for the people in Lubbock. <laughs> uh, Rachel on the app chat weighing in. Chad, did you know that today is National Wisconsin Day? More importantly, does Nick know? I did see that earlier. I did write that down. Uh, Nick, happy Wisconsin Day to you. May the cheese flow. We'll be right back. The Chad Hasty Show, weekdays 5 to 7 p.m. Sound off during the show by sending Chad a text at 806-680-2790. I answered the call. Together, we fought for our nation and its people. And even though I no longer wear the uniform, I am still a Marine. My service has come full circle. I will continue to support my country and my community. Then and now, Semper Fidelis remains my promise. Always faithful. Always Marine. Diane from Michigan, a disabled senior citizen trying to get by. Henry from Florida, a veteran fighting to make ends meet. Elena from Arizona, a mother struggling to feed her daughter. Hi, I'm Connie Britton, and I support Feeding America because they help provide over 6 billion meals to people in need each year, like Diane, Henry, and Elena. Learn more at feedingamerica.org. Feeding America, 200 food banks strong. News and talk of West Texas. News Talk 95.1 and 790 KFYO. You forget about Chad at Chad Hasty Radio on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and on your radio. Now back to the Chad Hasty Show. All right, welcome back to the Chad Hasty Show. Appreciate you being out there today. We'll get to your text messages and uh, phone calls a little bit later on. Joining us on the phones right now, a great friend of the program over at the Texan.News, Mackenzie DeLulo. And if you've never gone to the Texan.News, shame on you. You need to go. That's where they've got all the great statewide news of the day. And Mackenzie, welcome back. How are you today? I'm well, Chad. How are you? Doing great. Uh, appreciate you. Uh, appreciate you joining us. Uh, today and uh, we've got a few stories to get to, uh, including we, we were uh, before the uh, our last segment we were talking about those in Lubbock who are uh, you know not now signing up for the uh, for uh, ERCOT and are moving over to ERCOT uh, and you've got uh, different energy companies that they have to uh, choose. Uh, you've got a couple of Democrats who want to uh, change the way power is done in Texas. 
yes, a quite revolutionary uh, proposal here. Um, congressional Democrats have for a while had um, eyes on Texas's power grid and forcing ERCOT to connect to the rest of the country. One of Texas's, um, one of the unique things about our grid is that it is contained within the state um, and or not subject to federal regulation in the way that many other states in the country are. Um, but this would be a move to make that in-state or uh, make that federal regulation apply to our grid. Um, this is a proposal from Congressman Greg Kassar from Austin, a very progressive member of the city council turned congressman, and it would repeal exemptions made for ERCOT, um, the ERCOT region under the Federal Power Act. So this is all kind of relating back to uh, February of 2021, that historic winter storm that hit the state and generators of all different types tripped offline or fell completely out of use. Of course, we know the state was in a week-long blackout, how much many parts of the state were. Um, since then, lawmakers have passed a lot of physical and market reforms in the state legislature, attempting to address some of those issues. They were chiefly fashioned to counterbalance the federal government's renewable energy subsidy, which has caused a massive influx of wind and solar power at the expense of new dispatchable generation. Um, but this really sparked a renewed call from a lot of Democrats for the ERCOT grid to connect with the surrounding regions and open itself up to federal regulation. Kassar's opinion is basically that this increased oversight from the federal government would save money and electricity transactions in the long run um, by avoiding times of prolonged scarcity, a, a mark of ERCOT for sure, um, and the kind that resulted in tens of billions in charges during that uh, week of February. Senator Charles Schwartner, a Republican here in Texas, a senator here in Texas, um, he was the lead in the Texas Senate on basically all power grid related issues said um, in response to Qatar's uh, proposal, not going to happen. So a strong <laughs> response there, and certainly it would take a lot for that piece of legislation to pass in D.C., but unsurprising that a lot of Republicans here in Texas are not friendly to the idea. Yeah, well, and I mean, you've got at least the Democrats who are behind this idea. Uh, I, I think it would be easy to say, uh, evil to, easy to, to, to label them as not friendly towards uh, Texas Energy uh, in the past, uh, in that uh, they are friendly towards the Green New Deal, legislation like it, and being part of the national grid and being able to, uh, you know, at least have the feds uh, do a little, have a little bit more oversight uh, over what happens in Texas is probably, maybe, uh, part of the plan here. I'd certainly say I'd agree with that and say, in addition, that this is one of those issues that Democrats in Texas often have a hard time navigating between the federal uh, agenda and plan of their party, like you said, the Green New Deal and other adjacent proposals, and balancing the fact that they represent Texas, which is an energy-driven state. It's a huge push and pull for Democrats in Texas, just like the border and other issues, even guns here in Texas, um, make it very complicated for some Democrats to uh, navigate both the federal and the state political landscape. Yeah. Uh, taking a look at uh, what's uh, going on statewide as well, at least uh, what's happening in Rockwall County. Very interesting uh, uh, issue popping up there. Yes. Yeah, so one voter with a very lengthy rap sheet <laughs> was the sole voter in a 2022 election that authorized taxes and more than $800 million in debt for residents who don't even yet live in that area. Um, this is in Rockwall County, and the county has now filed a lawsuit against the special purpose district, the MUD, created by that allegedly ineligible voter. This is Zachary Lee Carson, the voter. He cast a loan and deciding ballot in the election to create this MUD, Municipal Utility District. He was convicted of burglary, a second-degree felony. Mind you, felons cannot vote in Texas along with a misdemeanor for offensive touching of a child that had been pled down. Um, in this election, Green led borrowing authority for the mud to the tune of $366 million for water and sanitation infrastructure and $466 million for roads. Now, the Rockwell um, County and County Judge, um, in his official capacity, sued the MUD, alleging faulty approval. Now, MUD's 
uh, if you're around Texas politics, you hear about them a good deal, a little bit obscure, but a big topic in the legislature. They're initiated by housing developers trying to build the prerequisite uh, infrastructure necessary to attract residents, basically a tax base, um, and to get electoral approval of debt for a population that doesn't yet exist, developers often place one voter in a temporary residence on that acreage of the prospective utility district. This is very frustrating often to local officials um, and eventual residents when a MUD just kind of pops up with the full authority to levy taxes. Certainly something we'll keep an eye on, but this is something the legislature repeatedly attempts to address. Conversations are had at the Capitol, and oftentimes MUDs are approved in a way that's much more kosher. But this is a very notable instance and uh, an allegedly ineligible voter approving um, a utility district. Mm. And then Senator Ted Cruz making a little bit of news today. Absolutely. So following some news that some members of a UN-associated organization took part in the October 7th Hamas terrorist attack on Israel, the Israeli military has found that Hamas hid assets, significant assets, beneath the organization's building in Gaza. Senator Ted Cruz is calling for an investigation. This organization in question is the UNRWA, which provides a lot of resources to Palestinian refugees. The Israeli military told the Wall Street Journal that uh, had they kn- or they had known about uh, the complex underneath the facility, the headquarters, but were unable to target it with airstrikes because of the UN presence above. Um, the organization, the UNRWA, came out and said that they did not know what was under their headquarters in Gaza. Now, just a few weeks ago, reports indicated that some uh, group employees took part in Hamas's October 7th attack. Twelve employees had connections to that attack. Senator Cruz said in a statement, foreigners who knowingly funded UNRWA should be subject to sanctions, and Americans who knowingly fundraised for them should be investigated for criminal material support and held accountable. Cruz and other Senate Republicans are sending a letter, have sent a letter to the U.S. Attorney General calling on him to open a criminal investigation into uh, the UNRWA. Now, notably, the U.S. Senate recently passed about a $100 billion foreign aid package that contains um, about $9.2 billion in humanitarian assistance um, and care for civilians in Gaza and the West Bank, Ukraine, and other war zones around the world. Cruz was one of the no votes on the bill, very notably after some border security provisions were struck from the proposal. Huge deal there. Definitely go read the rest of that at the Texan.news for the details. But very notable that Cruz and other Republican senators are making note of this UN affiliated organization and their ties to Hamas. Yep, uh, very interesting. You can read that and more over at the Texan.news. Mackenzie, as always, appreciate your time and y'all keep up the good work. Thanks, Chad. Thank you. That's Mackenzie DeLulo with the Texan News. We'll be right back on the Chad HD Show. tornado is on the ground. You're at work, your spouse is at a meeting, the kids are at three different schools, power and cell are out, and your home is inaccessible. Now what? Have a preset meetup plan. Share it with everyone in your family and practice it. Know the emergency plans at work and school too. Get ahead of what's ahead. Be informed, make a plan, build a kit. Hashtag Texas Ready. Go to TXReady.org for more information. Speeding tickets aren't cheap. And they can make your insurance rates go up, too. So if you don't remember anything else from this commercial, remember this. Slow down or pay up. Also, if law enforcement pulls you over for speeding, they'll check your license and registration. So be ready for that. Basically, if you ever wonder if speeding is worth it, the answer is pretty obvious. No way. Speeding is dangerous and expensive. So slow down or pay up. Be safe. Drive smart. A message from Textod. Host Sunrise LBK, weekday mornings from 6 to 8.30 on News Talk 95.1 and 790 KFYO. Welcome back. 
Chad HD Show, 1-800-687-0790. You can text in at 806-680-2790. If you are in Lubbock, want to know uh, how many of you have uh, still not chosen an energy provider, you can text in 806-680-2790. Just trying to get a, uh, you know, kind of see what the, where the audience is. If uh, they've chosen a new energy provider, if they're on LPNL, uh, and if, if you haven't, why uh, you haven't? Uh, one uh, text uh, says, uh, my life is too hard to worry about electricity. And from uh, that from Ruckus out there. Okay. Uh, another uh, texter, a few more texters say that they chose uh, yesterday. Uh, another uh, texter say that they have uh, chosen as well. Uh, let's see. Yeah. All right. So uh, you can text in. Let us know uh, if you've chosen a new energy providers. Yesterday, 48% of LPNL customers had still not chosen an energy provider. Texas A&M. This out of the Texan News. Uh, you you, you uh, remember these DEI offices that they're getting rid of, that they have to get rid of. Uh, now, I guess now they're just going to start turning them into areas of study. Texas A&M is allowing a uh, program that will allow students to minor in LGBT studies. The story out of the Texan says State Representative Brian Harrison posted online about the undergraduate minor in lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and queer studies. So that he would be demanding answers from Texas A&M, he followed his initial alert by saying that he spoke with leadership at Texas A&M who confirmed that the school is, quote, spending state resources to assert that gender and sexuality are socially constructed and that transphobia has a relationship to racism, colonialism, sexism, ableism, and classism, all the isms. And they plan to continue spending tax dollars to maintain their undergraduate minor in LGBTQ studies. But if you want to study transgenderism, fine. Do it with your own damn money, not on the backs of hardworking Texas taxpayers who are being taxed into their homes, Harrison told the Texan. According to the Texas A&M website, the minor will teach students how to, quote, examine the ways gender and sexuality are socially constructed through the minor in LGBTQ plus studies, as well as critically analyze how sexuality and sexual orientation shape gender roles, identities, and social statuses in societies. Students will study social activism and homophobia and transphobia's relationship to the forms of power, including examining topics such as sexism, colonialism, ableism, classism, and other forms of power. The minor is offered through the Department of Sociology. The program requires that students take classes in aesthetics of activism, feminist theory, and queer theory. How, how does this prepare anyone for real world? Forget about Forget about everything else. Forget about everything else. How does this prepare you for a job? Other than, I guess, whining and crying about LGBT issues. Maybe that's the job. You're gonna get, this is to help you get a job on uh, on MSNBC or maybe with Rolling Stone magazine. I don't know. But isn't college, isn't that supposed to get you ready for the real world? Isn't college... You know, it's supposed to be there to get you prepared for for uh, for the you know to, to to make money, prepare you for the real world, prepare you for life. That's why you have a major and a minor is to help you get a job, right? Now, that doesn't mean that you're always going to be in a profession that has anything to do with your major or minor. But to minor and LGBTQ plus issues. 
and you have to take classes on aesthetics of activism, feminist theory, and queer theory. Harrison went on to explain that he told the Texas A&M provost, the undergraduate minor claims, gender and sexuality are social constructs. Provost did not disagree. Harrison said he'll be advocating for a legislative fix next session regarding the issue with the leadership of A&M to do the right thing for the people of Texas and terminate the program immediately. Congressman Chip Roy agreed with Harrison's assertion, saying this must be fixed in the next legislative session completely. During the 88th session, the hotly contested piece of legislation that was passed in Bill 17 prohibited public universities from operating diversity or offices of uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion. Bill also prohibits those institutions from compelling persons to provide a DEI statement. But now we're just going to have DEI classes, it looks like. That's going to be the next big thing. In order to uh, you know move around this, you'll be able to minor in DEI. You'll be able to minor in LGBT issues. You'll be able to minor in equity. And it's going to be the same thing. It's going to be the, the same propaganda that's out there. And I'm sure there will be other universities that take this up. But, but again, I just I just wonder, you know, your your job is to prepare students for the future. I don't know how this prepares anyone for a future in anything. I could be wrong. I don't know. I don't think I am, though. When we come back, oh, we've got our friends from the Lions Club. They're here. I don't think they brought pancakes with them, but they're going to talk about pancakes in the world's largest pancake festival that's coming up soon. All that much more when we come back. The Chad Hasty Show, a presentation of the Texas Town Square Media Network. The views and opinions expressed during the Chad Hasty Show are not necessarily the views of this station staff, management, advertisers, or Town Square Media. Broadcasting from the great state of Texas, this is the Chad Hasty Show. News and views with a Lone Star perspective. You can sound off during the show by sending Chad a text at 806-680-2790. That's 806-680-2790. Or call in at 1-800-687-0790. Now, here's Chad Hasty. All right, welcome back to the Chad AC Show. Appreciate you tuning in this evening, this Thursday evening. Tomorrow on Open Line Friday, who knows what all we'll get to. Well, we know coming up this weekend, oh, it's all about pancakes. pancakes. That's right, pancakes. And the Lubbock Lions Club, their 72nd annual, the largest pancake festival in the world will be happening on Saturday in Lubbock, Texas. And uh, we've got, once again, in studio, Deborah Perry and Terry Holman uh, joining us with the uh, Lubbock Lions Club, getting ready for another Pancake Festival. Absolutely, and thanks for having us back. Yeah, of course. Uh, Yeah. Uh, So are you guys ready? Absolutely. Uh, Yeah. (laughs) Absolutely. We're just just waiting for everybody to buy up all the tickets that are left. That's right. Yeah. 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 So, okay, let's let's talk a little bit about the uh, one of the 72nd annual uh, Pancake Festival. For those, and, and we were talking about this during the break, as long as it's been around in Lubbock, 72 years, yeah, uh, there are still people who have not gone and have not even heard of it before. That's bizarre. Yes. And so don't be square and get down there <laughs> and eat a pancake or two and throw some bacon on top of it. That's right. Yeah. And and so uh, when if, for those who haven't gone before, what what can they expect when they when they show up to the Civic Center? So this is uh, all you can eat pancakes, all you can eat sausage tomorrow, uh, February seventeenth, Saturday, uh, from seven in the morning to eight o'clock at night. 
Um, it's a, it's a great community event. I've said before, it's a Lubbock institution. We'll feed about 14,000 people or so uh, through the day. Um, there's a lot of folks there, uh, but the line moves incredibly quick. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And so it's, it's all you can eat pancakes and sausage, but then beyond that, we got bacon. Yep. And, and bacon. we got lots of bacon. And some popcorn. Uh, and we've got popcorn and we got soft drinks and, and we more got bacon. cotton candy and then more bacon. <laughs> and then if you want some more bacon, we can get you and more bacon. And we got bacon. tattoos. We got, uh, we yeah. got face tattoos yes. for the, for the kiddos. Yeah. And so there's a lot, it's a family event. It's just a fun thing to do. Uh, see folks you hadn't seen in a while. Uh, spend spend a short time with us uh, sometime Saturday. We got live entertainment all day long. All yeah. day long. It's uh, it's at the, in the Civic Center exhibit yeah. hall, and it's just a it's it's fun. It's a fun deal. Yeah, yeah. and uh, it starts at seven a.m. Yes, goes, early early goes all the way till eight p.m. That's right. And is there a is there a slow time? That's a great question, Chad. Usually in the afternoons, it's a little bit slower because everybody wants to eat breakfast at breakfast. Mm-hmm. But you can have pancakes and sausage for lunch. You can have it for dinner. You can have it for supper. You can have it for tea time. But, yes, normally in the afternoon is a better time if you want to get in a little bit quicker. But, but you know, move it, fast. And, and, and it does. It moves so fast. We, yes. we were talking uh, during, during the break. Uh, Deborah asked, you know, do, do y'all go? What time do you like to go? We're usually the 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. <laughs> right in the heart of uh, of it. But I mean, I, I don't but think you still get through quickly. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't think we've ever waited really that long to where you're looking down at your watch, going, "Oh yeah, we're going to get through this." Oh, thing. you get It's through. always moving. Yeah, it it, is. The, the line's continuously yeah. moving. Uh, and, and because if you've never gone, they don't have just one or two stations for pancakes. There's multiple well, a stations. A lot of griddles. Yeah, there's yeah. a lot of griddles, a lot yeah. of flipping uh, that's, right. that's going on, a lot that's of throwing right. the sausage that's right. uh, on there. And then you move on, and then you've got uh, people on ladders who are kind of directing traffic. That's right. That's right. And, uh, and telling people where to go. And even though if you think that line is better, no, no, no. They're going to tell you the yeah. shorter line to go that's to. Right. And, uh, and so it's it, it's good. It's good that's you right. get up there and – uh, now, here's a question that uh, that we got last time that I didn't have time to ask you. If someone you know walks up, they get the uh, the pancakes, they got the sausage links right. Uh, right there. Can they request more of the sausage links uh, before they go and, and run off? The way that we're we typically work is you know you sort of get the plate uh, and certainly you can ask, and I'm sure the the folks will be willing most of them are pretty uh, generous yeah, yeah. at throwing another one out there, but, but we're but just trying to get everything through the line. What most yeah. folks do is they just they go sit down. They eat and they get back up and you can hop right back in line. Not the, not the whole big line, but you just go right back up to the griddles yeah. and it's, exactly. it's another few seconds and you, yeah. you just get you another plate and yeah. uh, they'll, they'll hook you up. And I've, I've seen people make many, many trips to the griddle before. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how they do it, but it, it's amazing That's to right. watch. That's, That's right. right. Absolutely. And, uh, so we, we've got, uh, tickets that you can buy in advance. That's correct. Which are still $10 before you get to the door. Through tomorrow, they're ten dollars because the day of the event, it's twelve dollars at the door. Okay, but you can buy tickets. Yes. We just had a texture who asked, "Hey, right. what if I get there, don't have tickets? Can I buy them at the door?" You sure can. Yes, yeah. and you yes. can pay with cash. You can pay with uh, a credit card, a debit card. I believe we're set up for um, Ven- Venmo no, and yes. some of the pay apps. We've got some opportunities. So yeah, we're in the twenty first century. So right. we'll, we're happy to take take your money about however you can you can go. Do people need to bring cash for uh, like the coins? in order they, to get, like, bacon they, and stuff like they that. They can. They can bring cash because, it, and ideally, you want to buy the tokens, but go ahead and bring cash. Yeah. Now, you can buy tokens at the front door when you're buying tickets as well, too. Yeah, well, and that's yeah. what I meant. Can, yeah. Do you need to have cash to buy the tokens? No, you can You can, you can put. You can do you put, tokens with a credit card as okay. well. Okay, that's right. All right. Yes. Yeah. Okay, because I know there was a time where you had to have cash to buy the tokens. So few um, people no. carry money anymore. anymore. That's yeah. true. It's, it's, a, it's a weird... It's like Terry said, we got to get... We're in the 21st century. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that's, yeah. yeah. Hey, yeah. nothing wrong Technology, with that. Technology, yeah. Nothing wrong with that. Where, where, how does this money benefit the community? So there's several organizations within Lubbock that all the profits off of this event go to and stay in Lubbock uh, through, the, through the different organizations such as uh, the Boy Scout Troop 157, the Texas Boys and Girls Ranch, um, the Texas Boys, Texas Boys and Girls Clubs, Goodwill Industries, Salvation Army, the Lubbock ISD's uh, school glass, uh, eyeglass program for the school kiddos. 
um, Ronald McDonald House. These are just a few of the organizations that we serve in the city. And we also send money to the Texas Lions Camp at Kerrville for the kids that are physically disabled, have cancer, diabetes, Down syndrome. There's several different things. And if anybody out there has a child with a special needs, you can go to our LubbockLions.org website and look for information, or you can ask any of the Lions on Saturday. All right. Yeah. And, of course, the uh, 72nd Annual Pancake Festival, it's coming up uh, this weekend on Saturday. And it's a great family affair. Just everybody go out there. You're going to see neighbors. You're going to see friends. People that you reunion. see all mm-hmm. the time yeah. uh, that, that are that are out there. And, again, like you said, uh, just entertainment throughout the day. Absolutely. You can go to our Facebook page. There's a list of all the entertainment that's scheduled to be there on Saturday. And there's also more information on our Facebook page that gets you more information as, uh, as regards to buying tickets, if it's a lion, or contact our office. The other thing that we have an opportunity to to offer the community is if you have used eyeglasses, we will have several boxes set up throughout the community uh, the Civic Center for everybody to uh, put their eyeglasses in, their used eyeglasses. And we got full last year, so we really appreciate that. That goes to overseas, uh, other countries that need those eyeglasses for those people over there. That is our core mission. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, if someone's interested, you know, just overall, what what d- does the Lubbock Lions Club besides the Pancake Festival? What what else? You know, what what uh, what all do y'all do? What are what's the organization all about? Well, we're actually a service organization, so that's what we do. We serve. We make money, and we, we want to serve the community in that way. We also have a kids fish event that comes up in April, April twenty seventh. We'll have our tenth annual kid fish. It's not a fundraiser, but it's a community wide activity for the families to come out there and fish the. Uh, uh, Mackenzie Park is stocked with fish. The Texas Parks and Wildlife uh, uh, Organization, the statewide, uh, they stock it. And mm-hmm. then they also provide uh, lots of goodies, Cabela's, uh, Bass Pro Shops. All, we've got lots of great things for the kids to earn out there, too. Um, and we also help the Boy Scout Troop 157. We help them sell flags on 4th on Broadway. So there's all sorts of other things that we put together. So oh. we're a great group of people that like to hang out and have fun and go serve the community. If people are interested in becoming a Lions Club member. Mm-hmm. So we are one of the largest Lions Clubs uh, in the country. Uh, I'm, I, I think we're still in the top five. Um, I think the best thing to do is, is come visit us Saturday. Come see what we're all about. Look for someone in a yellow vest. Say, hey, I, I'm interested in joining the club. We are an open club. I've, I've mm-hmm. said before, we're not a stuffy old men's club. We, <laughs> men and women and, and really people of all ages and all uh, occupations. Mm-hmm. See what we do. Uh, come talk to us. Uh, we'd love to have you come check us out. We we have lunch at the Scottish Rite Learning Center every Tuesday. Our dues are really not too terribly high. I mean, it basically covers the cost of lunch. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's a it's a great, fun group to get involved in. Um, we're a lively bunch. Uh, we, 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 we tend to have we tend to have fun, and uh, no, we'd we'd love to talk to anyone who's interested. Mm-hmm. Come see us Saturday. Yeah. See what we're all about. I think you'll witness the character of all of our members and all the volunteers that come out and help as well. I mean, it's just a it's just a fun thing, yeah, and it's no, a great it thing to be involved in. It's a big family, big family. Good, excellent. Yeah, yeah. the seventy uh, second annual Lubbock Lions Club Pancake Festival. On the 17th, that's Saturday, 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. Uh, you go out there, get you some pancakes and sausage and, and bacon. Bacon. And, and the bacon. Bacon. We, Don't we forget do, about the yeah, bacon. We, we sell those yeah. bacon strips. Lots of bacon. Lots of bacon. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, thanks for coming and out. And if you've never been, shh, come out there and tell us you've been there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right. Thanks for coming out. Appreciate Thank you, you all for, uh, for joining us today. When we come back, your phone calls, your text, and more. The Chad Hasty Show can be heard all over West Texas. Weekdays from 5 to 7 p.m. Tune in on News Talk 95.1 and 790 KFYO in Lubbock. News Talk 940 in Amarillo. News Talk 94.7 and 1470 KYYW in Abilene. And in Wichita Falls on News Talk 96.3 and 1290. The Chad Hasty Show. Make it a part of your drive home. Weekdays from 5 to 7 p.m. There will be one less birthday party to celebrate today. One less coffee date with a friend today. One less family dinner today. Because there will be one less motorcycle rider on the road today. On average, a motorcyclist is killed on Texas roads every day. 
When you're behind the wheel, obey the speed limit and be extra careful at intersections. Let's start turning that one less into one more. Please share the road and look twice for motorcycles. There's a life riding on it. A message from TxDOT. KFYO and the KFYO app. Welcome back to the Chad HD Show. Thanks again to our friends over at the Lions Club for stopping by today. No one has been charged yet in the uh, parade shooting for the Kansas City Chiefs. Police apparently have a 24-hour window to release the suspects or file charges. No charges have yet been filed. Maybe they will uh, here in the uh, next couple of hours in the uh, mass shooting that took place uh, in Kansas City, Missouri on Wednesday. Police have detained multiple suspects. Kansas City Police Chief held a press conference today to update the press on the ongoing investigation, announcing prosecutors are still working on bringing charges. Quote, we have not charged them yet. Still under investigation. We do have 24 hours until we either have to file charges or release them. She continued, again, we're working closely with the Jackson County Prosecutor's Office to present the most successful case for prosecution to their actions with linking them to the actual shooting. Gunshots rang out during the Kansas City Chiefs victory parade at about 2 p.m. local time uh, and uh, near the Union Station parking garage in Kansas City, killing one woman, injuring 22 others. woman identified as Lisa Lopez Galvin, a uh, mother of two, local radio DJ there in Kansas City. Eleven children were also wounded during the shooting, but were expected to recover as of Wednesday night. Nine of them were shot, two sustained other injuries. During a press conference Thursday, doctors with the University Health said the eight gunshot victims had received five of those were dismissed from the emergency department on Wednesday night. Three are still in the hospital, one patient, stable conditions, two others critical in ICU, but improving. Now, according to uh, other reports, said that uh, this uh, this shooting was obviously, uh, it was not uh, terrorism of any kind. Instead, you had at least two juveniles who were arrested. Two of the three suspects that were arrested were juveniles who were in a personal dispute. So this wasn't a mass shooting. This wasn't terrorism. This wasn't... uh, you know, you, you 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 saw exactly where the Democrats were going yesterday. You know this, uh, you know AR fifteen, got to ban AR fifteen. Got to ban guns. We got to get guns out of here. Let me tell you something. It's a bunch of thugs. Yeah, these thugs who decided to get into a fight at a uh, at a at a at a parade. And decided to shoot at each other. That's what this really will boil down to. It's going to come down to uh, big city crime. What you see in big city, uh, in, in, in urban big city areas all around the country. And it will be swept under the rug. You won't hear much about it nationally. Joe's not going to comment on it. You're not going to see anyone on ESPN call for gun control after this because it doesn't fit the narrative that they wanted. I'm sure they wanted this to be some MAGA supporter, some Taylor Swift hating supporter out there. That's who they wanted this to be. But instead, it's uh, it's a bunch of thugs who decided to have a fight and they brought guns. They don't care about gun laws. They don't care how many laws that you pass. They're going to shoot at each other. And you had a bunch of innocent people who got caught in the crossfire. I 
And it would not surprise me at all to learn that uh, at least uh, you know that uh, at least one of these folks probably has a rap sheet. I mean, if, if this goes along with what we've seen in other cities where you have violence that breaks out among the uh, the quote unquote youth. And usually they, they've, they've been arrested before. They've been let out. Because we can't keep anyone in jail anymore. We can't keep anyone in prison anymore. We can't, uh, we can't keep people in jail to pay for their crimes. We gotta let them out. You gotta let them back onto the street so that way they can uh, carry on more, uh, more, more acts of, uh, of violence towards people. And who knows, you may have it in this case. It's, uh, two of these uh, folks were apparently juveniles. Well, I'm sure they'll be, I'm sure they'll be out of jail in no time at all. Even though one person was killed, uh, they'll, they'll, you know, at least one of these folks will probably be out, uh, in no time at all. And that's if we hear anything about this moving forward after this week. You may not hear anything about it at all. Just as we've seen with some of these other shootings that have taken place that don't fit into the liberal narrative that they try to sell, the media narrative that uh, that they try to put out there in order to ban guns. 806-680-2790. Elizabeth uh, Wayne in. Say the LGBT minor from Texas A&M, I agree with you that on its face, the course of study sounds absurd and useless, but I can imagine somebody who wants to be a lawyer who specializes in the kind of cases. These classes would be very useful when prosecuting LGBT activists who break the law and whine about social justice. It might be one of those know the enemy kinds of things, maybe. Otherwise, I can't see the value in such an education. Yeah, I don't, I, 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 I wish I could, uh, get, get on with, uh, you know, uh, be with that, uh, that, that line of thinking. I think this is just another liberal class and a liberal minor that they're throwing out there. Otherwise, it would be the law of, not the theory of. I mean, it's all theories that they're, uh, that, that they're doing. The, the theory of, uh, of, of, uh, of the activism. Wow, well, that may, may probably be offered in the law school and not just a general, the general Texas A&M, uh, university class. So another texture. I bet the, uh, the area was a gun free zone. Criminals don't care. Well, I'm sure it was. Again, we, we, as I brought up yesterday, those who are going to carry out evil acts and those who are, you know, those who are, uh, gangbangers or criminals, uh, those who want to carry out evil acts, they don't care about your laws. It's already against the law to shoot somebody and murder them because just because you don't like them. You can't do that. It's against the law to murder people. Last time I checked. It's against the law just to randomly go up and shoot somebody. And you can do some hard time for that. You can be in jail for a really, really long time for that. And if that's not going to dissuade some of these individuals, another law won't do it either. Your phone calls, your text messages, and more when we return. Call in to the Chad Hasty Show at 1-800-687-0790. The Chad Hasty Show, broadcasting on the Texas Town Square Media Network. Today's markets from the Texas Department of Ag. Well, howdy, neighbors. Texas food and cattle auction supported prices steady. The cattle futures were up. February live cattle futures up a dollar. Close at 183.40. 
March feeder cattle futures up 88 cents, close at 247.10. March cotton futures up a point, close at 94.63. March wheat futures down 12 cents, close at 576 a bushel. March corn down six pennies, close at 418. And March soybean futures down eight cents, close at $11.62 a bushel. March soybean meal futures down $3.80. Close at $339.50 per ton. February Class B milk futures up a couple of pennies. Close at $16.18 a hundred. March crude oil futures up $1.39 to close at $78.03 per barrel. And the Dow Jones was up 348 points. Close at 38,773. And that's Market Roundup from the Texas Department of Agriculture. I'm your commissioner, Sid Miller. And remember, friends, Texas agriculture matters. So. The news and talk of West Texas. News Talk 95.1 and 790 KFYO. You're listening to the Chad Hasty Show. Welcome back to the Chad HD Show. Paul from Post weighing in saying, uh, for minors, arrest and charge the parents. It's been done for uh, one mass shooter. Well, that's uh, that, that's assuming the parents are even around and doing anything. I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm not against the idea. But that, that's, uh, again, assuming that the uh, the parents have any type of clue whatsoever. And at some point, you're still responsible for what you, the, the parents. You're not going to charge the parents with uh, with murder or anything like that. I mean, I'm sure there's something you could charge them with. Uh, but you know, if these minors are 16 years old, charge them as adults. Charge them as adults. They're 15, 16 years old. They know exactly what they're doing. Then charge them as adults. Yeah, that that's that that's what you need to do and lock them up. If 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 you're you know if you're going to a a a, a parade and deciding that's where you're going to open up fire on someone you just don't like, and you're going to get into a personal fight with them, which again probably extends beyond just a a push and a shove at a parade. Probably this probably goes a little bit deeper. And then you're most likely not going to contribute much to society. In the future, you're probably not going to be uh, contributing very much to uh, to society. Not in a good way. You'd send in your thoughts on the text line, 806-680-2790. Former President Donald Trump says the charges against him in Fulton County, quote, have to be dropped, telling Fox News... The case is a scam, while District Attorney Fannie Willis testified, oh boy, she lost it today, uh, Fannie Willis publicly uh, uh, about an alleged improper affair that she had with the special prosecutor, Nathan Wade. Willis took the stand in Georgia Thursday to defend her relationship with Wade, whom she hired back in 2021 to help prosecute the former president in a sweeping racketeering case related to the 2020 election. The Trump co-defendant, Michael Roman, alleged in court filings last month that Willis should be disqualified from the case, uh, from the case claiming that she was uh, she financially benefited from hiring Wade because of their personal relationship. Both Willis and Wade confirmed their relationship under oath uh, in court Thursday, testified the romantic involvement began in early 2022 after Wade's contract in the case uh, began. Trump told Fox News, there's no case here. It's so badly tainted. There's no case. This is a perfect phone. Uh, that was a perfect phone call. It was perfect. By, but by going after Trump, she's able to get her boyfriend more money than they ever dreamed possible. Trump blasted Willis as disgraced. Trump claims the uh, case is another example of election interference pointing to Wade's uh, trips to the White House. 
Trump said charges brought against him are a weaponization of law enforcement. That's pretty true. Quote, you're seeing it now because they got caught. The two lovers got caught, Trump said to Fox News. The judge in this uh, case had to intervene after Fannie Willis uh, had several outbursts. Fannie Willis, who's prosecuting Trump on charges of attempting to overturn the election, verbally sparred with lawyers for hours at an uh, evidentiary hearing regarding her relationship with the lead prosecutor who she hired to bring the case against Trump. At one point, the presiding judge called a five-minute recess to apparently let tempers cool down. When court was back in session, he told lawyers to stop talking over each other and cautioned Willis, saying that we have to listen to the questions when asked. If this happens again and again, I'm going to have no choice but to strike your testimony. Yeah, she was not very happy. She's not very happy at all. I mean, she came across uh, as a fool. Uh, in this, uh, in this, and again, it, it just goes to show that uh, all this is. It, it, I grew Trump. It is tainted. There's no reason for any of this. It, it, again, just a case to enrich certain people and to uh, in an attempt to to uh, you know uh, impact this election. Eight zero six six eight zero two seven nine zero. But uh yeah, Fanny Willis, not a good day for her. Not not a good day for her. I'm sure they'll find some way of blaming Trump in the uh in the national news media though. I'm sure they'll they'll find some uh some way to uh to, to say this is all Trump's fault. Willis on uh, Thursday said she had some choice words. Some choice words about Roman's motion calling some of the allegations dishonest, extremely offensive. At one point, Willis held up a printed copy of the allegations against her. Both hands turned to the judge, yelling, this is a lie. Willis also called uh, her uh, called defense attorney Ashley Merchant's interest contrary to democracy. Willis took the stand following several witnesses, including Wade and Willis' former friend, who testified that she had no doubt Willis and Wade had a romantic relationship starting back in 2019, contradicting Willis's prior statements to the court. Much of Willis's testimony focused on vacations that she took with Wade, including Caribbean cruises and visiting wine country in California. Sounds nice. Both testified Wade routinely paid for the trips while Willis would reimburse him with cash. When pressed about whether any records existed for her withdrawals of the funds, as she said that she was accustomed and taught by her father to keep six months of regular expenses on cash or on hand in cash. So, of course, she doesn't have any proof of anything. Of course not. Not, uh, not any type of proof. Hey, all this stuff is going to blow up in the Democrats' faces. All of it is going to blow up in their faces. 806-680-2790. You can send in your thoughts on the uh, app chat. Hey, I text you saying that, uh, let's see, David weighed in once again on the app chat. Saying that the case out of Georgia has uh, has been from the get go has been a bunch of BS. This shows uh, even more so uh, how this was all planned and an attack on Trump. Yeah. Oh, you can say that about all these cases. You can say it about all of these uh, the, these court cases that are out there. And you know, it's all it's all of it's all it's done really is uh, get get supporters to rally around Trump, and that's what the Democrats absolutely hate. They can't stand it. They cannot stand it. All this, all, all these court cases, everything, 
that Trump has been accused of, everything that Trump has uh, been alleged, and all of it is just rallying people to his side because it's so, it, people can see through this stuff. And hopefully people are paying attention. Hopefully they're paying attention to some of this out there. 1-800-687-0790. You can text in at 806-680-2790. We'll be right back. We live Texas. We breathe Texas. The landmarks, the swagger, and the lore make us who we are. We devour the tastes and the smells of our state. You just might say there's something in the air. So do your part to help protect it. Keep your tires at the correct pressure and avoid idling at drive throughs Both help reduce emissions. For tips, visit drivecleantexas.org. Drive Clean Texas. Live and breathe it. Brought to you by Texton. Mr. Rogers said, look for the helpers. can always find people who are helping. Thank you to all the first responders who put their lives in danger to help us when my brothers and sisters need them. We look out for the helpers because they look out for us. Help us help first responders in your community today. Go to firstrcf.org to learn more. And Buck Sexton, weekdays 11 a.m. till 2 p.m. on News Talk 95.1 and 790 KFYO. Chad HD show. You can send in your thoughts on the text line, 806-680-2790. That's 806-680-2790. And uh, let's see. Uh, yeah. All right. Uh, how about this? Uh, out of Amarillo. Uh-oh. City of Amarillo beginning surprise inspections of massage establishments on March 1st. We want to make sure everything is, I guess, on the up and up, you could say. City of Amarillo begin, uh, will begin the surprise inspections of the massage establishments on March 1st. Inspections, part of a new ordinance, which took effect at the first of the year. As stated in the ordinance, illicit massage Businesses are the second most often reported type of human trafficking reported to the National Human Trafficking Hotline. In 2016, police raided five massage parlors in Amarillo. Violators uh, face a fine and loss of the massage establishment license. Each uh, business must fill out an establishment license application and a therapist license application for each employed massage therapist. And each uh, massage uh, establishment must comply by the, or complete the application by March 1. So, there you go. Let's go to the phones. 1-800-687-0790. Go out to uh, Abilene. That's where Eric's at. Eric, what's going on? There's a summer of love a couple of years ago, um, and there's cars set on fire and buildings burned and crushed. And, and I remember there's this couple that was defending their house from the mob. And here we have kids going out and creating problems. I don't know what the big deal is. I mean, you know, so, so they killed a couple of people. No big deal. We got 10,000, 20,000 people a day coming across the border. Ah, what's the big deal? We got people roasting tourists and, and old people up in New York, cold cocking them upside the head, knocking them out flat and getting on, on recognizance bond and, and no bail. What's the big deal? Is it because they're white right and they have guns? Well, well, I mean, what? what, what I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure exactly what you're saying here. 
Well, the, the, the people in, in, in that 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 shot up the the party, you know, at um, in Kansas City. Kansas City, they're, they're, they're obviously white because they had guns well, why, and they young kids. Wait, are, are you being serious? <laughs> no. I'm okay, all right, serious. okay, okay. Yeah, no, it's it, they're, they're they they just and, and again, this is why it's going to get swept under the rug because it doesn't fit the narrative that this is a mass shooting that is carried out by a MAGA person. And the, I guarantee the news media wanted this to be like an anti Taylor Swift thing. You know, that's exactly what they wanted it to be uh, was uh, some MAGA person who just exploded with rage. And now that they're going to see that it's just uh, it's it's crime, it's going to be. Uh, Youth, angry youth crime uh, that we see in Chicago, that we see in New York, that we see in other places. Uh, it's going to become a non-story by Monday, probably by tomorrow. Well, if they just self-identify as transgender or confused. Oh, well, then yeah, I mean that they'd just sweep that under the rug too. It, it would, this thing would be dismissed so fast. It'd be like, oh, no, winter of love. There we go. Here we go. Eric, I mean. Well, What's the big deal? I don't understand. Eric, thank I mean, you very on. much. Have a great day you in did. Abilene. You as well. 806-680-2790. You can uh, send in your thoughts. Uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. Uh, another uh, texture weighing in on charging the parents. Uh, Michigan mom guilty of manslaughter when her kid shot up a school. Husband currently facing same charges. President, uh, precedent ensuing charging others not directly involved with violent acts. I, and I'm fine with that if that's what they want to do. Uh, it, it, but I, I'm not sure that's going to change. I'm not sure it's going to change anything. That's not going to make the kids wise up. It's not, uh, again, this, this goes back to a, much larger issue that we've that we've talked about many times here on the show. Getting back to family, getting back to uh, getting back to faith and family, getting back to uh, having uh, relationships, getting back to uh, you know having respect for authority. There's a lot of things here at, at work here. A lot of things at play uh, that that really tie into all of this. And so, uh, you know, again, you can charge the parents if you want to, and I'm, I'm not necessarily against that. But let's make sure that we also uh, charge the the youth, charge them as adults, and throw them behind prison for for the rest of their lives. That's what it should be. They, they shouldn't be let out for good behavior anytime soon. They need to go away. I know that's not the fun thing to say anymore. It's not the hip, trendy thing to say. You're supposed to let people out of jail real quick now. But if you're going to open fire just because you don't like somebody and you're going to open fire in a uh, at a parade, I'm fine with you going away for a very, 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 very long time. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Follow me on social media at Chat HD Radio. Tomorrow on Open Line Friday, we'll have some fun here on the program. we got some good, great topics to get to. Also, get the latest political news of the day. And hear from you on a variety of topics. Stay safe. Stay healthy. God bless you all. We'll see you back here tomorrow at 5 p.m. The Chad Hasty Show, a presentation of the Texas Town Square Media Network. The views and opinions expressed during the Chad Hasty Show are not necessarily the views of this station staff, management, advertisers, or Town Square Media.